Podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's your unique host. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, none, you know, my day of all gone. I want y'all to stop what y'all doing right now. Go ahead and like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. I mean, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, you name it, we're on it. But most importantly, go check out our Patreon channel because that's where you're going to find our full length interviews and on our YouTube membership. So, you know, he'd be chopping it up a lot of times, and y'all may not want to see the chop up. So, the full length interviews drop way before the clippings come, so don't say I never told you. Yeah, well, you know, at the end of the day, man, it's my channel. I can chop it if I want to. You know what I'm saying? And if you don't like it, man, you gonna like it, man, because we're gonna do whatever you need to be done to keep you focused. Check it, man. Hey, man, listen, man. Uh, y'all heard what she said. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. But we got a guy today here, y'all. He don't need no introduction, man. This guy right here, man, by way of Chicago. This man been in Illinois. He's somewhere upstate. Is it Chicago? No, I'm originally from Springfield. Illinois. Oh, Illinois, Springfield. See, you, but everybody think he, because, you know, he got a few songs with different people up in the area. So mm -hmm. you get that feel of like, man, that boy from Chicago? Yeah, everybody say that. Man. No matter what. And I'm always in the city, man. I get a lot of love in the city. I do a lot of community work in the city. Mario like, so. Cannon is in the building. Y'all yeah. stop playing. Respect this <laughs> man's hustle, his swag, man. This guy done work with a lot of different people. We just so happy to have him in Texas, man. It's going down, man. Check it, man. Hey, man, how you doing? Doing? Man, I'm doing good, man. What's good, man? I look, I'm on Boss Talk, so this is crazy. <laughs> I, 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 I ain't thinking a million years I was going to be Are over you here. you serious, man, man? It's a blessing, man. Man, listen, man. I'm not playing no games over here. We had to have you. If you in the city don't come see me, it's a problem. Bro, you know what's crazy, bro? God brought me here, man. Wow. Because you know what? I, I I was telling Rock, man, like, yo, uh, just two weeks ago, I didn't want to rap no more. Really? Yeah. yeah. Why? You know, I... You know, as you as you grow and uh, and you and you still accessible by people you love and people you ha have endearment with and people that are that are kind of you reachable still, right? Right. But the thing is, you you rising and then they don't know how to take that. So man, you know, you start getting all the hate mail hate. when you start, you know. And I was I was just getting you know just tired of just doing the same thing. I was like, man, you know, if I keep doing this and I'm in the same area, I'm gonna end up somebody gonna try to kill me. Or I'm gonna do something to somebody, and this ain't worth it. You know, no, I get it, man, because people don't understand the pressures of life, bro. Like, like it's something else, man. You got to really, really, really be focused. You got to have your spiritual grounding in place because it'll make it to where you'll do something or somebody do something to you because you just sick and tired of being sick and tired. Yeah. I've been there. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you want people, you try to help people. You try to please people. You can't make them happy. And Lord knows you don't need to be trying to make no woman happy. Shout out to Father's Day. I'm going to go and say that right now. You know <laughs> Let's go. It's Father's Day, yo. Happy but Father's Day. I just, you know, when, I, when, I, when we researched you, man, I was really, really happy to, uh, you know, know that we was going to get to bless, you know, be a blessing to you and you be a blessing to us. I want to get into your background though a little bit. No, I just really, like I said, again, man, just thank you for coming on the show, man. You're a blessing, man. Um, I know already that people going to enjoy this. They're going to love your story. you one of those guys that really, to be honest with you, to me, like, it's a breath of fresh air. I love the way your your sounds is, and we're going to get all into that. But first, like I said, yeah. we're going to let Miss Jamaica do her thing. She always starts this thing off right. So you say you were born and raised in, in um, Illinois, right? Yeah, Illinois, yeah. Okay, what part of Illinois? I'm from Springfield, Illinois, originally. Springfield. How yeah. long were you living there? Uh, most of my childhood, most man. Of we, child we moved around a lot. So, you know, I actually lived in like Memphis, Tennessee, mm. Jackson, Mississippi, okay. Gary, Indiana. Uh, I lived a little bit in Iowa, too. So me and my mom had me when she was young. We moved around a lot. So but, but Springfield was my my home where I made so my bones So that's the at. place that you love the most out of all the places that you moved to? Yeah, I love my home, though. That's my home. What makes that's it unique compared to other than it's your home? What makes it unique compared to all the other places that you've been to? Because Springfield got uh, got a little bit of everybody. It's like a melting pot, but people forget. So there's Chicago, but then you got Springfield, you know, and, and Springfield's in the middle of everything, man. So it's like the heart of, you know, Chicago, St. Louis, uh, Decatur, mm. Peoria, you know, Indiana. It's right in the middle. So mm. everybody come there. Okay, so um, were you raised with your, uh, well, you, you say you moved around with your mom. So where was your dad? Uh, you know, I, I really didn't have my dad in my early years of my life. You know, not that he's a bad guy. Mm -hmm. and I'm, I mean, I'm not here to, you know, it's, father, no. happy, it's Father's Day, too. You know, but no, you know. Uh, but you go through things to make you stronger and for a reason. Yeah. But, and a lot of people who sit in that seat, 
go through that same thing raised by a single mom and um i wish we could figure out how to break that trend and that cycle to have both parents in the household but yeah. you know it's life and the way how it is but what did you know of him or did you know him when you were a child uh yes and no um they always i always was told that you know i look like this guy right and then um his sister actually used to come pick me up okay. sometimes but i never used to see him like mm. i never really you know talked to him until i got older you know what i'm saying uh, you know but i never yeah i never i never uh i knew I, I knew i had a dad out there i just you know everybody got a father right but uh i just didn't know no what was else. that first conversation like the first time you actually he came to pick you up well and how old were you uh pick me up i mean no because you said because you you spend some time with him every now and again no no, no not at was, all not until i was adult yeah like, but even yeah. then even then the it first was just time cool. it was like it was more like just like what's up man you know mm -hmm. what's up pops you know because I, I didn't have no 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 animosity towards him right because man you know i just try to think things from all angles and make sure that i you know i approach every situation with love and come from a, a, a place of love and genuine being genuine man so i wanted to make sure that i don't have this anger towards this man i don't know what his, right. his situation was or what he had going on um but from far as i know man he's a great guy man he's really nice mm -hmm. to me he was cool you know not because i wasn't sure if you would ask because you know most of the time whenever you meet somebody for the first time yeah. or not for the first like, time where you like, in my life yeah not even like at an angry spot but yeah. you know instead of we assuming like certain happened? things like you know i'm grown now you're grown what happened you know just to get it off your chest because yeah. that's how a lot of times we break um, traditional curses and you know be able to move on from certain situations as much yeah. as a lot of times people say oh i don't hold him up or i'm not angry but some way somehow we react to certain things and not realizing that was the cause of it i mean i look so like to be to be like honest man mm -hmm. like i was always told my, my mom told me that what my dad you know and so at the time I understand, you know, why he would, wouldn't come around, you know, because mm -hmm. I was always told that wasn't my dad. But, I, you know, we look twins. It's obvious. <laughs> like, if you see the pictures online, it's crazy. Um, but, so I'm, I'm not going to fault him right. for that situation. Right. And I, I can't look at him, though, because he's, he's a good dude. He takes care of his kids. His family's great. He's got a wife and kids. My dad's, he's, a, he's a, just a dope dude, man. You're so, the first child? Um no, I think no, my, I got an older sister. Okay. Um, on, on my dad's side. On your dad's side. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So, but no, man. But y'all have a great relationship now. Yeah, we cool, man. It's like it's weird because like we so similar, man, and it's we got the same mannerisms and stuff. I'm just a little more gritty, a little bit, you know. <laughs> you know, but uh, we got the same mannerisms and everything, so it's weird that to see to see that man but it's kind of it's cool man it's good to have that would you say that you resemble him more than any of the other children oh yeah i look more like him than everybody <laughs> like the twins yeah and that's crazy ain't it like yeah <laughs> i look really like him for real so I, for sure I, I can tell you my dad when when i really knew that i looked like my dad was when i seen him in the casket that's when i knew like that looked like me in this casket damn just being 100. I mean, I told you that. Yeah. That's I was like, wild. damn. Like, and you never realized that I never, before. That never you... thought that he looked like me at all. Never seen it. And I, but you know, that day, I guess I was taking a real good look at him because I knew that'd be the last It'd time. The last I time. Did, you, did you grow up with him? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's that's probably why then, because you always was with him. I was with him, and they called me him, and all this other yeah, stuff. Like, like, yeah. And then you see him for real. Nigga, man, like that. He, we cool, but I look better than that nigga. Man. <laughs> <laughs> but then I, when I looked at him in there, I was like, damn, I mean, he didn't look like he supposed to be there because he was still, you know, young. Yeah. he was young, mm -hmm. man. And I was like, damn, man. Like, and, and, you know, it just wakes you up. I guess that's the first time I really woke up to be real about the fact of, this is my dad and I'm losing my dad, yeah. you know, so. I love, can, you know, you Yeah, he kicked in on another level. That's why I'm, my, my dad, light skin, you know, he be doing light skin shit, you know. <laughs> like, I, he said I inspired him to get in the gym. He be posting like, you know, pictures on Facebook. I seen him, he had an orange cutoff with some orange glasses. Okay, <laughs> okay. With a, with a cutoff, you know, some old man. He trying to show up what yeah, he got he was, working hey, with. Man, I was like, I'm like, ah, man, he tripping, man. My dad <laughs> tripping. <laughs> But it's good that you inspired him in that way. Nah, he, it's funny. I'll be sharing. I was, like, I was like, look at my, I'll let people roast him. I was like, hey, y'all roast my pops. Look at him. <laughs> I was like, get on his ass. <laughs> this nigga can't dress. <laughs> he got orange glasses. And it was a baseball type of glasses. Not even a, you know what I'm saying? Not a cool one. Nah, 
<laughs> Look, he gonna watch this and be he gonna be. Man, he, he trying he though. Be At least he trying. Yeah. He trying. Leave him alone. Shout he trying. Wine, man, man, so like, <laughs> man, you 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 start acting right. So like, what inspired you to start acting? Man, low key. Um, I had I was going to school at ISU in Bloomington, Illinois, and I met. Uh, I met some cats, man, in the fraternities and stuff. And I'm gonna keep it a buck with you, man. That's when I first started seeing brothers like dress, like dress. Yeah. Like, uh, they carry themselves a certain way. And if, if I'm from Springfield, so I was like, man, gold tea. Yeah. I had gold tea. Yeah. I had rims on my car on campus. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm hood. In, I'm in the shit. I'm man. from the hood. I'm in it. You feel me? Yeah, that's it. And so uh, I get on campus and I meet this brother uh, named Leroyce Hawkins, and he's on the show Chicago PD. He's a main, he's a black cop on that show. He's a main character. He's been on there 10 plus season. Incredible. But anyway, I mean, he, I mean him on campus and we start doing like, you know, pageants and plays and stuff and talent shows, you know, earning some extra bread on the side, man. And he got me into acting, you know, watching him do plays and stuff. So I went back to the hood and I started doing like local films and stuff, you know, really getting into it. You know what I mean? And then uh, eventually, man, I started going up to Chicago and, you know, being a background and extra. Wow. Until I got me an agent. I used to sleep in my car, bro. That's good. That's I good. Go, I, went, I was go crazy, man. Yeah. I'd get up at 12 in the morning, 1 in the morning. I used to even have relationships with, like, with the local uh, police. Like, let them know, like, bro, look, I was living in a small town. And they're like, you know, they, they I'm, I'm black, you know, I got to. Got to definitely let them know, hey, man. Hey, for they think, so they start messing with me. I had a little background, you know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. going to do some shit. Right? Yeah. And so I, but I'm just like, look, I'm trying to play. Like, I'm leaving at 1 in the morning, man. I know y'all see me out here. I'm finna drive to Chicago and go sleep in my damn car. I'm finna get on this. I'm finna get on the show. Man, that's I'm finna, I'm finna make my eighty dollars real quick. That's real. <laughs> <laughs> but it really ain't about the eighty. It's about building. I'm building, bro. Yeah. It, it built character, man. It was cool, man. And them crafty was good. You know what I'm man, saying? Man, so what was the? What, that was the first time you get into a role. Yeah, so the first, the first role I got was it was like local in the hood. Yep. Uh, I was actually it was crazy. It was this uh, movie called Seriously Tripping, and uh, this dude. Uh, a homie of mine named Osling, cool, cool dude. He shot a film, and I'm bigger. So I'm playing this dude to getting punk. I get punked out, but I'm bigger than the nigga that's punking me. It was weird, man. It it, 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 it didn't make sense, Oz. All right, you hear me talk shit right now. You my boy. I'm giving you pub right now on boss talk. But nigga, why was why was I get hemmed up? And I'm bigger than the nigga that was hemming me up. That didn't make sense. That don't make sense. Hell no, nah, man. Man, so like, like you, you get, you definitely was a part of Empire. Like you play like Terrence Howard as a younger dude, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, like, so how do you even get that part, right? Yo, crazy man. So, <laughs> I was a stand-in for Trey Byers. Okay. For Dre, um, phenomenal dude, man. Like incredible, incredible guy. Smart. I think he graduated from Harvard, bro. But anyways. Wow. Um, I'm standing from standing for Trey Byers, and um, I get fired one day, right, from being a stand. I didn't know I was fired. How but do you not know you're fired? Cause they don't tell you. You just, just don't just, call you. They just don't hit you. With, they don't hit you back. So what did you do? So <laughs> it's gonna get messy. <laughs> 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 All right, so check it out. So I was standing. Everybody loved me on set, man. I had a great relationship with. Um, you know, I was a cool dude, funny, you know, all the all the main cast members like me. But, um. <laughs> What'd you do, man? Yo, so, we were filming at the mansion, and uh, everybody get their schedules, you know, for to come to all the stand-ins. You know, they get to eat with the actors. You know, stand-in, you right next to the star. I'm standing around like, where am I at? You know, because I'll go ask one of the older homies, because I'm still new. I said, hey, man, you, I ain't got no schedule. He's like, man, I got to talk to you, man. Damn. So you got to talk to me, man. The, what's going on? Nigga, like, everybody what love the me. They hell, laughing. man? So, yeah, man. Uh, somebody was complaining about you, bro. Uh, yeah, they just said uh, they was one, one feeling your vibe, man, or something. I was like, bro, everybody in the cast like me for the most part. For the most part? Yeah, it's that one person that did So, it. So, you know what I'm saying? So I got fired that day. I sat in my car. I had a little twinkle in my eye. I ain't cry. I'm a... I'm a I'm, I'm yeah, you you shouldn't have cried because you know you already had got you had gotten let go from AT and T. So uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you used to it. So, <laughs> hey, don't be you know about that. <laughs> so, so, so I'm so, a G. You already done been through the fire. I'm in a G. So I'm sitting in the car like what the, you know what I'm saying. And then uh, so he told me he said yeah uh, 
it, he, it be like that sometimes with that particular uh, person. Really? Mm. And they said, who was this person? <laughs> 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 who in the hell was it? Hey, man, you know the energy, you know, was put out there. Uh, I don't even want to. I don't even want to start nothing, man. <laughs> it's, it's a big. It's a big name. Yeah. Wow. And it's bogus because um, I'm just a young brother trying to, you know, get to. I looked up to them. Yeah. So do you feel like they were intimidated by you? Yeah, that's what you? it was. Because here's the thing. What I was told was this is what he does. He do it all the time. Yeah. To, and and to, what says this? Which which movie again? This is Empire. That's Terrence Howard. He really <laughs> because he, he fly. The nigga really flying. His flying is just floating around. This nigga flying is getting bumped over a little bit. Nigga, it's very obvious. You can't get that around. Right, <laughs> Come on, my nigga. Like, like it's very obvious. You know what I'm saying? So you basically you you gotta understand that's something that comedians come in here and say as well. Like they'll go and be a comedian on the stage with certain guys, and if it takes away from their essence, they don't want them guys around because it takes away from their star power. But, bro, but then, I'm sorry, but then to me in acting, I would think it, correct me if I'm wrong, but I would think it would be different because he's older, you're younger, so you can only play that that younger yeah, role. You can't play his role and he can't it. play your role because he's older. So this ain't the first time we heard Terrence Howard cutting up. He did this. Jamie Foxx gave a story like this uh, where he was a little off. He was in character all the time and all. They had their issues. This is something that happens in entertainment. Y'all are men. Bravado, all that stuff kicks in, man. Yeah. It don't matter where you at. You can be on a set. You can be in a car. We done got into it just being going to the casino together. Niggas get into it. Y'all act like because y'all get in the profession that it ain't going to happen no more. Yo, we got to be hush up. Check it out, Nigga, bro. things happen. The we yeah, but the nigga had it out for me though since I was a background, bro. Since <laughs> don't matter, you you kind of favor the nigga, bro. So look, this, yeah. <laughs> this is what happened though. Check it out, check it out. The the damn uh, the, uh, the the directors and the dudes shooting, all of them used to always come up to me and say, "You look like Cassius Clay, or you look like this." They used to always mess with me, and they always wanted to put me in front of the camera. So one time, uh, I was standing next to this little honey or whatever. She cool, my home girl. She looked good and everything, you know. And bro walked up and tried to like stunt on me in front of her like this ain't my girl bro it's cool like bro, I don't know. try to bump you yeah he tried to bump me man and this, I, was, I was just a background $80 a day hey, he, he made 80000 a day I made $80 a, a day. day no but that's a part of it though I think really you gonna get that man yeah. because at the end of the day it ain't even about the money bro it's about the fact of the energy and the way you bring in it, bro. I, yeah. I done been in the room with niggas, man, and I ignored big niggas, man. I never forget it. I didn't know who French Montana was, but it was, I didn't give a damn. It was about <laughs> me, nigga. When I walk in, it's nigga said, me. nigga, who is you? I, I, you remember that day? It's been time when a lot of people be around. It's the way you carry yourself. So you got that it factor, nigga, like yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm yeah, I, it don't matter, man. I, I be trying to be cool, man, be level headed, man. But you know, I, I do be dealing with a lot of shit, man. And but I just be trying to stay, you know, stay grounded, man, and be thankful that God even put me in a position to be where I was at, even to be interacting with that. You know what I'm saying? But it's another thing you just said about anointed. You know, are you anointed, bro, about God? You said God. That's anointing. Really, a lot of time, your the the God in you is what really moved things out the way. Yeah. It have you shining in a way to where people can't understand why they might not feel you on certain perspective, but it's because of the God in you. So you won't even understand it. So that light that's shining in you is beaming, and you don't even know that it's beaming like it's beaming. Next thing you know, nigga gonna fire you, man. Yeah. <laughs> that's crazy, man. Look, I, everybody right. got that. I'm looking around like, what my schedule? Y'all got one? So, it, yeah, man, it was a, that was the craziest how, day ever, how, man. How did that, how did, but it built you in a way to where you Yo, said, you understood. Yeah, hell yeah, because listen, they actually called me back to come back to be a stand-in. Wow. And I told them no. I said, man, I said, next time I'm getting on the show. That's real. Now, keep in mind, I had did a million uh, auditions. I ain't never got a role. Yeah. Well, I get an audition to play a younger version of Terrence Howard. <laughs> so, and I didn't even have a damn script for the audition. <laughs> I went to the audition with a Bluetooth boombox playing my music with a big fake gold chain on. I had some costume jewelry on. And uh, it was a bunch of light-skinned niggas in there. You know what I'm saying? Everybody just light-skinned it up. And Trying shit. to portray him? Yeah, it was super. It was, you know, it was the like most light-skinned room you ever be in. And uh, they was coming out. Hey, man, they're only going to let you say two words, man, when you go in there, man. So good luck. 
Same. They're dude. trying to intimidate. They go. Everybody. everybody going in, coming right out, coming right out. Man, I'm like, but these all these are all well put together dudes, you know. Yeah. Man, I'm looking straight G. I got a Wade cap on, you know. They said play the young Terrence Howard. You got to be a thug. So you can't th- these thug dudes, it. These dudes are looking too nice. Too you know nice. What I'm saying? Yeah. Pause. Right, yeah, cool. I get it. You call it. <laughs> yeah, Boss. I get it. I understand why. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Mason Murder. <laughs> so, but so uh, you, when you went in there, what happened? Uh, so I went in there with my stuff. They was like staring. You know how they stare at you. They try to intimidate, intimidate you. you. You know, it's nothing. I wasn't having it. I just got fired. I don't care. I got this big ass Bluetooth walking down Chicago, hot as hell. It was in the middle of the summer. I was like, I, man, I don't care right now, man. I'm gonna do this. I got the gold chain on, let's go. So I get in there and start rapping my stuff. Ugh, ugh. They was like, this kept letting me go. They was like, you got the script? I was like, I am the script. <laughs> You're spitting. So I got, I'm just rapping over my song, you know. They was like, can you do that again? I was like, oh, I made it past two words. Yeah, yeah, I, I done like, killed it, I done killed it. So I did it again. Man, I had a contract that night, man. Damn. That night, I was up doing paperwork at two in the morning. They wanted me to go and re-record the song, uh, that's what the DJ spins. Okay. The main, the little song that Terrence Howard be rapping. Yeah. Petey Pablo wrote that. Wow, Petey yeah. Pablo. Yeah, he was writing. Shout out to Petey Pablo. Yeah, he was writing a lot for uh, for Empire, actually. Wow, um, Petey Pablo but, doing a little bit more than what I thought he was yeah. doing. Yeah, so I was, so I was you know, going. I ain't heard from the nigga in a minute. Yeah, I did a show with him uh, last year. All right, so he's still working a little bit? Yeah, we did the festival. It was me, him, Twister, Ludacris. Uh, we was at the Tila. Tequila Festival in uh, Kansas City, Kansas. That's me, Kansas City, Kansas. It was lit. Man, oh, yeah? That boy was crazy. Tacos and Tequila Festival. It was probably like 40,000 people. Man, did he do that take his shirt off like a helicopter? Uh, <laughs> that's that nigga, man. Hey, that's what yeah, he do. I think he, he did it. He, that's his song. <laughs> no, I'm Hey, he came up to me like, hey, he came up to me like, we, he knew me for years. He's like, hey, what's up? How you doing, bro? How you been, man? I'm like, hey, nigga, you don't know me. Like, oh, damn. He trying to get in there, man. No, he he, he cool as hell. hell. He cool as hell, though. Like, like, no, he, he one of them Carolina boys, so he got to get it in. Well, that boy Petey Pablo cooler than a fan, bro. So Empire, like, like that was a, I mean, it was a dope, it was a dope set. She liked it. Did you like it? I could, I watched it for a little while. Yeah, so yeah. A little, little too much going on for me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Certain things I couldn't get out with, as all these movies is doing nowadays. I'm kind of, I'm kind of, I'm school. old school. I'm trying yeah. to learn how to uh, at least be uh, uh, one of those guys who can see things that, Really don't affect them to a. I, I'm turning the TV off a lot of times. I ain't gonna yeah. lie. I'm moving fast forward, you know. But at the end of the day, I understand the society and I understand that we can't, you know, run around here and ignore the fact that we have issues in America. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Or it's trying to get our people to all come together, no matter who you are, no matter no matter what walk of life, what race, no matter what gender, no matter what you're doing, we got to really cause a, a, a what they call it the this thing, this sonic boom and bring everybody in the room, you know what I'm saying? And and we can do it if we just keep on trying, you know? I mean, once we realize we all operating on one accord, man, and we got yeah. God within all of us, man, I mean, we gotta stop pushing God out, man. We gotta drop the ego. I always say drop man. the ego, edging God out. That's, That's it. That's exactly what, what it ego is. Stand That's for. big. And uh, we, gotta, we gotta stop leading with the ego, man. Because then, you know, the next young brother, I, I might have to, you know, reach one, teach one. That's what Trey Byers told me, you know? You know um, the day I had got fired, um, he had told me that he didn't know I got fired. He had nothing to do with. It. He didn't even know. But he had told me we were, we see, we ate together a few times, and uh, he said, "Hey man, he's he's real real stern, real proper. He said, "Hey man, let me tell you something, brother. You are going to be in my position. You make sure you reach and you t- help the next person, just like I'm talking to you, just like I'm going to help you." Wow. And I was like. Man, and it touched me that, you know, I was like, man. So I thought about that even when I had got fired. I was like, man, Trey already told me I'm I'm gonna be straight, you know. So his word gave you courage, gave, me, gave you courage, gave you, it, it really pretty much told you that I can do it. Made I'm me gonna optimistic, be okay. man, made I was very optimistic. And then that's when, you know, bam, you know, a few, few weeks later, I'm the, I didn't got on a damn show. I'm not in the background no more, I got credits now. Not only I got on a show for music, you know, I'm getting paid for the music, now I'm getting paid for the acting, you know what I'm saying? So how was it now that you own that? Did you see Terrence again? Man, <laughs> I was trying to avoid him because I knew as soon as he see me on the show, he was going to make sure I got off that mug. I swear to God. Did you avoid him? Uh, I was trying to, man, but, you know, hey, I had changes. I had changes of some of the thing on the script a little bit. They let me do some stuff. They was rocking with me. But then uh, he seen me, man. Uh, I, he, they, was doing, they was doing a scene, another, and I was trying to sneak through, and he looked, and he seen me. And then, uh, man, my character... 
my character was supposed to be recurring for the entire season or whatever and then he ended up getting chopped um, like damn I, my, my character said called in and said he, he didn't want to do it or something on the show I quit on the show you know what I'm saying damn. And, I, and I was watching it in the movie theater because I had a plan in the town I was at and I was like man so I was texting the, one of the homies that's on the set right he's like man he's like, man, they're supposed to bring you back man you know I was like man I was supposed to be recurring the contract was supposed to be recurring but Ended up getting chopped short, man. And that's all right, man. You gave it a hell of a go. But but you know, but now that's it's that's water under the bridge, baby. Now nah, that's real. You gave it a hell of a go. That was a that was a whole movement. Yeah. That's a whole movement. You yeah. gotta be happy with that. I'm happy with it all. Some man. people never would even make it on the set. Then you came back. Look at the resilience in you. Man, I was kept fighting. I'm, yeah, I'm getting in that thing, man. You hate on me. Okay, that's cool. Well, I'll let sweat. me ask you this because you definitely you was on the show. There was a few things that happened on the show, things that I, I was you with Smoulet that night when he got robbed? You know, what's up, man? <laughs> <laughs> what's good, bro? No, I'm just kidding. You know what's like, crazy? Like, like he got robbed. Well, I, I don't know if he did. I'm connected it was something to that. happened. I'm connected to that both, I'm in both ways. How? So look, this is crazy. <laughs> so not only, you know, I'm on Empire, you know, and I I've talked to Jesse's before and he cool, you know. Whatever, but the dudes that they accuse or you know that they said potentially could have yeah. did it or whatever, we had the same agent. Ah, damn! So you you pretty much you was, your name may have been on a piece of paper somewhere saying was he with him? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So and then uh, I mean that's that was that whole thing was crazy, man. I don't. I don't really know. Really crazy. Cause like, cause I'm on set, bro, and that, that stuff on the paper. I'm riding around, and that's all you see on the front page of the paper. No, but you, the reason I brought it up because it was so weird when it happened. It was like, damn, like they wrong for that. They did my boy injustice. I said, listen, man, I'm going to be honest with you, man. I said, that boy, they, they wrong for what they did at 3 in the morning, <laughs> but 2 in the morning, what that nigga doing is I went to Chicago on the south side. It's too many people standing in front of stores to even do anything. Like, that nigga must be hard is what I was thinking. Like, to go out there like that in the middle of the night, nigga, I don't even go outside. When I was there, nigga, I go to, what's that piece of place, Giordano's or something? Yeah, Giordano's. And then I head back in. I don't, and I stay in the, the surf, where downtown, you go to the one downtown when you're, you know, I'm not local. By the, yeah, by the, uh, <laughs> yeah. by the Neiman Marcus. Yeah, yeah, yeah during yeah, the day yeah, I yeah, might boss. ride on the west side, but I come right back to my destination. Yeah. I'm not out here moving like I know what's going in the city. So for him to do that, and me knowing how it is there, boy, I was like, damn, he got, and then they said, nah, I don't know if it happened. I said, what? That, that that was crazy, man. I, I don't know what he was going through at that time, what made him do that, or you know what. Was this a part of the time when you was on the show? I was on the show, and that's the show ended after that. But how was it, how was the energy when that happened? It was it was spooky, bro, because we already knew, like, man, this is going to come to it. This is going to end everything. Like, everybody, it was already up in the air if it was, like, you know. Going to come back and do another season. Yeah, because, you know, and then you had, like, the, I think the mayor had got involved with it, you know. It was a whole ordeal. It was huge, man. And, and we were making a movement about something that was so fictitious, right? Like, why why would we make this big movement about this? And, and now you got all these people, all this attention on you, man. I just, I was... I just prayed, man. I was I was sad though because like as soon as that happened, that's when the, sh the show was over, bro. But you gotta understand, man. Sometimes people be going through something that's bigger than the show. Yeah. I mean, whatever going on with, with what's going on with Jesse at that time, you know, because we care about him as a person. Yeah. So really, when you look at different people go through different things and it do interject or change something, he could have went a whole nother level and not even been here anymore. Yeah, he could. So he for him, himself out. that's yeah, right. Yeah, so you're right. for you're him right. to still be here is big. Even though he might have went through somewhere, he felt like somebody done him wrong, he had to do that. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I just was like, damn. I just brought it up because if you talk Empire, you got to bring that up. Yeah, Ain't no was, way you yo, can talk about Empire without that's the biggest thing for me that happened. I'm just right? like, like, but like you said, though, it's good that, bro, uh, he, he did what he did, but at the same time, it could have been worse. And we got to look worse. at the mental health because I've been in some un, unstable positions, you know, being in entertainment, you know? It, Shit's hard, man. It's tough, ain't because it? Because it's not only hard in entertainment. You got you, you got you get rejected all the time. You, not only are you used to rejection, but you got to deal with the rejection from the outside that people don't know. You understand me? Mm -hmm. hey, people think you got something you don't got. You know, or they think that they see you on TV. Or people, that, you got the outside. You got to deal with the people you love coming at you too. You're right. You know, and you constantly fighting. So it, that shit is hard. It's man. crazy. It's hard, man.
You want to get in here? So, um, when did you start your fitness journey? Because growing up, were you always like a scrawny kid or you always worked Man, out? And I was a skinny buck tooth, <laughs> run your mouth, talk shit. <laughs> Snot nose, little dude. I was always the skinniest dude, man, and the skinny, short, little, big head dude with big feet. But that would make you go shit. harder, right? That yeah. make you go harder. I wasn't getting nobody off my looks, man. I was, <laughs> I was jacked up. <laughs> so, who inspired you to get into fitness, then? Uh, honestly, man, just I was depressed, and I guess so. I remember, I remember being in uh, college and being. I used to run with the Alphas. They took me okay. in. You know, I, I couldn't become an Alpha because of my background. Yeah, I had of a course. record And you couldn't do get it. Oh, national. really? I didn't yeah. Know. No, you gotta have like a clean background or mm -hmm. you know something like that. But anyways, uh, I remember doing a physique show. You know what I'm saying? And you were skinny at that time. I was skinny, you okay. know. But I had a girl at the time, you know, so. It is what it is, right? <laughs> so the thing was, everybody got to come on and, you know, people will bid and vote for them and clap for them or whatever, right? So all the alphas, everybody yoke, you know, everybody, they work, they all run a track. I'm still back and forth between school and the streets, so I'm kind of like, I'm cheating the system, you know what I'm saying, at the time, you know? But anyways, we got the show. Everybody come out, cheer. My homie Dre go up before me. You know, shout out to DeAndre. He gonna laugh. This this video, he got this video too, by the way. This is a real Oh, story. he still got the video. Still got the video. You gotta send that to me, boy. I need to email me. To me. So he come out, he he run track girls. Ah, they going crazy, man. I'm back doing my push-ups, man. I got all this baby oil on me. I mean, it's dripping, you know. I'm ready. Man, I come out on stage. Man, you can, laugh. Bro, you can hear a mosquito Drop a mixtape. Like you can hear a pin what drop. The hell is you couldn't this? hear. Bro, I walk across the stage. I'm like, I'm turning. You know, I'm light skin, like, right? No, you know, I'm light skin, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm turning red in the motherfucker, bro. I'm like, <laughs> you trying to make them, make them feel you. Uh, bro. They didn't feel you. I, what, my, and my girl, man, at the time, she kind of like, she's like, yay. She the only clap you got. She made it worse because her clap wasn't enthusiastic enough. Damn. So she was, she had like that shameful clap, like, hey, yay. Looking around, like, that, like, damn, you supposed to be, you better go crazy, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? But yeah, that's when I was like, I gotta do something about my body, man. I gotta wow. change, man. Um, and so once I moved and got out of school, I moved to this town, Lincoln, man. I, uh, I had, a, I ran into a lot of issues when I first came there, being 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 a brother for one, and the town is predominantly okay. white, um, and you know, and you know how that is. It definitely it dealt with that a lot. You know, we know we by the Mason Dixon line. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel me? <clears throat> So I said, you know what, man? I'm gonna start going to the gym. And a lot of times, man, I was really low on finances. So like my, my either my power would be off, I won't have no hot water. So like me having a gym membership allowed me to shower. Yeah, that's hard, they, it, it, and that's a blessing. Yeah, so I got a hot shower in the gym and stuff, so it was cool. But it also, I noticed that people started treating me different. Once my body started getting right, I started getting more respect. I got promotion on my job, wow. you know what I'm saying? I won't, walk, well. I won't walk it no more, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Got my license back, you know, because because my I had a strong body. My body and mind started connecting. You know what I'm saying? I started feeling myself. I started becoming a man. You know, then, that's okay. big. Yeah, so that that transition, that body transition, was needed, man, to feel good about myself, man. So I always been a scrawny little dude, man. I was so little. But did you know that you would go from working in a gym to owning a gym? It's crazy, is yes. that's big. I was when dude hired me. He hired me as a manager, and. um I just loved helping people. It only took me like barely two years to just buy it from them. Wow. Because my clients loved me that much. I was, and I was just- And you getting, were getting results for that. Yeah, I was just making money personal training. So like, I had people writing me checks for the whole year. Wow, they love you. Yeah, and I'm black and Link, I'm a brother. But that's favor, So what man. do you do God, that's different favor, from anybody favor? else? I care. You know what I'm saying? That's big. I care. I really care. You went the it, extra mile. Yeah, it ain't about the and, and it wasn't like I was making a bunch of money. I just had a bunch of people and I wasn't even taking lunches. Like I would like go like I go like seven, eight hours straight and I'd just be eating like little snacks in between I have stuff in my my you know, my office or whatever. But I wouldn't even leave for lunch. And then I'll stay at the gym even later, just cleaning, mopping, being the janitor. I was doing everything. I didn't care because I had an opportunity to work for myself. And the freedom allowed me to go and do the acting and doing the music more and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's so I, I wasn't doing it for the money. I was doing it for the, the opportunity, the freedom to grow. Well, well, congratulations to you, man, for being an entrepreneur, business owner, 
somebody who we can look up to, our people can see and strive to be better, you know, that's big for me. Like that's the whole purpose of what I do is because I want to make sure we show our people because it ain't a lot of us that own anything. And when you start looking at our people and what we own, it's like we're midgets to the people who don't look like us. We got to go harder, bro. Well, I, you know, you can't fault us for being behind, man. You got to understand that we are we, we started off behind the curve, you know. Correct. They, they, got, they got that up on us. I mean, they got 400 years of free uh, labor. I get it. I so get it. But great is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Like we have to influence our people to understand that, man. And I don't care where we started. It's where we finished. We're going to do what we got to do we gonna we not for to get caught up in looking back because no man grab hold of plow and look back without running into something so we gotta focus man we gotta pull hard and dig harder to where i know i know i'm one of the main guys to say what you just said yeah but i do because mental illness is something that blocks us so much because of that and people don't realize that they don't even like to talk about it they, yeah they don't even let us even speak on it because they feel like we we crying when we say it but it's the truth but at the end of the day I know that God can bring us through this. I know that we can be number one. We and can. I know that everybody in the world right now focuses on us and the way we move and the things we do we have, to even create what they trying to be. We have the we have the, the we have the biggest influence on entertainment, That's sports it. and everything. One one thing I'll say man, you know, in contrary to that too is like okay, you know, if you look at it this way, we still got a lot of repairing to do. And we have been getting better, you know, whether people see it or not. We've been That's improving. Right. Um, just, they display all the bad stuff, but they don't display all the accomplishments and all the things we have done. And we have progressed in. Right. But if you if you take a, a different group of people. Right. And let's say like this guy graduates from uh, Harvard and they both graduate from Harvard. One is a brother. Right. So typically and, and they both make the, they both get the job. They both get the same money making job. Right. They get the same salary. Guess what? That brother has probably got to take care of grandma, mom, cousin, uncle. He probably already inherited a house from his family. He's got generational wealth already, so he's always going to be able to spring forward past, even though they have the same degree and the same job. Right. So we have that issue in our community too. We we it's make big. we got to make up for for what we didn't have still. You know that's what I'm true. saying? So that's where that's where it kind of comes, uh, where I kind of like, man, I understand. That's why I don't fault the kid or the brother that, that works uh, the job where just enough money to buy those Jordans, right? Yeah. But he has, but at least he has a job and he bought those Jordans because that was what's within his means. He doesn't have gainful employment yet. He And by, I mean, he doesn't have the employment where he can invest yet. That's true. You know what I'm saying? That's true. But that helps his self-esteem. That, that stops him from committing to crime and, that, and he feels like he's a part of the community. Well, you're speaking on your process, really, when you speak on that because you just told me about a kid who was strong and scrawny and didn't have nothing yeah. and buck tooth and then all of a sudden he starts to build his confidence. What you just explained and, and, and talked about is yourself. Yeah. Basically, I'm being yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's real, though. Yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. because you understand that that person can better themselves by yep. just little things like shoes, little things like haircuts, little things like getting a new fit, even though they don't have nothing else because you know that that's going to promote them to have dignity and pride and to step up their game as they see themselves yeah. elevate and flourish. So I get it. That's yeah. heavy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I want to ask you Hold something. On. How okay. many locations do you have? Uh, I got one location and then I own commercial real estate now as well. Okay. Are you planning to expand and have multiple fitness facilities? Uh, yeah. Right now, this the entertainment side is going well, and I'm busy with acting and music right now. But mm -hmm. definitely, I want to you know own multiple uh, uh, fitness facilities because that's my heart, man. This is I just love I love helping people. Yeah, but you gotta think about it though. If he you know if he was so passionate about that one, and he was giving it the all you know the essence. You know what happened when we start spreading over multiple mm -hmm. stores? You're not able to really focus on that one location or everybody the same because you get people that work for you that don't have your same. Passion, passion and it pretty much lets a lot of people down and that can really pretty much ruin you if you spread yourself thin Which, so you got to do both you got to figure out how to be a good delegate you got to balance that man balance yeah. is key man and delegation and um i think it's even difficult now to find people to bring on your team because a lot like people don't want to work right now so it's tough well, man to find you right em employees that are you know that have integrity and ambition and i, I want to strive so it's kind of tough man so and you said that you had, you mentioned that you have a record. Um, how old when, were you when this happened and what happened? Uh, 18. Okay. Uh, so, you know, honestly, man, I just, I was in the streets, mm -hmm. um, you know, not doing what I was supposed to do. And, you know, just, you know, my, I don't, my family, I don't come from much, you know, so this, that's what we know. That's all I, that's what I wanted to do. You know, I didn't have to do that. You, you mm -hmm. understand me? Mm -hmm. I had, my mom raised me right. 
But she. But the know, streets was calling. But the streets call. You know, once you turn eighteen, man, you know, I'm looking up to bro with the rims and the gold mm -hmm. teeth, bro. I want to be like him. You see how many people love him? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You see how much respect he get? Mm -hmm. You see the ladies going after him? Come on, I I just I just went through a situation. You know, I'm and granted this is this is soft, some light skin shit, I guess. You know, I'm 18. You know, my my uh, my girl at the time it had had uh, just cheated on me with my homies because he, he went to the league. You know, I was everybody in town. I'm like, I need money, man. It ain't no chick gonna stay with me if I ain't. I don't care if I'm a good person or I'm going to school and college. She's not gonna rock with me. People don't like me. He in the NBA. He got money. Everybody love him. I need to get. I need to get on his level, mm -hmm. you know. So I just went to the streets, man. I was like, I want to get, I want to get respect and love. I want to take care of my family. I want people to be proud of me. I How wanna, much time did you get? I didn't get that much time. I was just, that was my first time offender. Um, I was in, the, actually, I was in the Air Force too. Mm. At the time, I was like, I kicked out of the Air Force. I scored an 85 on that test, by the way. Wow. wow. I, expect, I was smart. Right. Um, and you know, before I had gotten in How trouble. How long was you in the Air Force? I never got to go to basic training because, because of that you got in situation. I, I called my so I called my uh, rec my recruiter, recruiter, and I just did physical maps. I did this thing called maps. So you do the test and you do the eyes and you cough and you get. I got sworn in and everything. I was going to go to basic training. So I was going to come down to Texas actually. Damn. Um, and I said, "Hey man, I called San Antonio. I, I was, whatever the, the basic yeah. training was, it, mm -hmm. it was in Texas. I know I was going to Texas, and I I, I called him. I said, "Hey man, I'm gonna keep a real shoot. Can you move my date up?" Cause I feel like I'm gonna be dead or in jail if you don't move wow. my date up. He said no, he couldn't. They did move it up. I still went to jail too quick. Mm, That's crazy. You felt it coming. I knew it was coming. Cause I was, I was just, I didn't care. Wow. And I was like, man, I'm gonna end you up. You couldn't hold on and wait. Well, you gotta understand. You, you, you What's keep, meant to happen? With no, I think. I, no, I think what, you're right. But, and, and, and I think that's what we forget about the way your. The steps of a good man is all about the Lord. I really believe that. I believe that what you're doing and the things, the walls you're hitting and the bumps, God's allowing that so that you can get where he needs you to be. You would have never been on Empire. You didn't no. ever been an entertainer on the level that he is now if he had went the route that he was trying to go. Mm -hmm. So God has an ultimate plan. Like I always say, we stand on one side and we look through a peak hole, through a keyhole of life. God stands on the other side. He see the whole thing. He already got it. And he knows, so he's letting you bump your head to get you where you need to be and you thinking you really doing something. But as a parent, <laughs> you know though, right? Yeah, I thought I thought I was winning. You know my you know my life goals was when I was 18, I ain't gonna lie to you, man. When I was in the street and I started doing that, all I wanted to do is have gold tea. I got the gold tea. Got the goals. I wanted rims on my car. Boom. I got the rims. I just wanted I wanted people to you know love me. Right. I want people to know me. I have money. That's and, real. And and it wasn't like we was just dirt poor and I needed to do that. You know, yeah my family don't got no money yet. We got alcohols, druggies, and whatever. But we, I didn't need to do what I was doing. That's real. But I, but I lived in just because I lived in the hood. You know, like I could have been like Cuba Gooden Jr. on the uh, what's that? Boys in the Boys hood. Boys in the hood. Because because I had that mindset. But the problem is, I just didn't have a a, a, a male role, Mel model, role model, to, model to come in. Because my mom tried her best, man. My mom was a strong woman. My mom worked double, triple jobs, man. You know, she was dope. But um, I just she couldn't control me. Wow. After 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 high school and keep in mind I was an honor roll, National Achiever Society, NAACP awards, all that stuff. I was an athlete. I had all I was cool. But man, once once I turned eighteen, man, I got that freedom. I but it's so crazy because being a parent, you know, we always try to we don't want a child to be on the streets. We don't want him to end up, you know, um, because they always say in the, in the streets you're either gonna be in prison or in a casket. And no parent want that for their child, especially nah. when you try to work all these different jobs so that it can be different, so you can offer them something better than, you know, what they had as a child growing up. So looking back on your life and you're a parent right now, right? Yeah. Looking back on your life, um, what could a mother have done differently, you know, to, to try to make that outcome different? Yeah. I mean, it, it takes a village, man. There it it is. really does. There you know, it is. She, you know, we would need people to come. We need to be together more. We're too individual. Uh, we're too separate, segregated right now. Like families are segregated, and we used to be all a family. Like I remember, you know, you get get multiple whoopings. You come home by the, you know, the uncle or somebody. On the, everybody the, gets. Everybody you. gets you. You know, and uh, I've actually had paddles in, paddling in school. I got paddled in school mm -hmm. when I lived in like Mississippi and Memphis. They used paddles back then. Yeah, still. I got that too. They cut yeah. all that out of schools yeah. nowadays. They, yeah, I used to fight. You ain't never get that though. Yeah. Oh no, I got, we had switches. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I got, that's good. I got two paddlers, man. 
because uh, they used to always make fun of me because of my teeth and stuff. And I used to have pay less shoes. Yeah, yeah, but I want to get, I want to go into. We laugh about pay. Wait, that's funny. No, there ain't nothing wrong with pay less pay shoes. Less I like pay, pay less shoes. Hey, remember well, that? That's how you you worked there for a little there. while. Yeah. Oh, she was remember, working hey, over remember there. the Mountaineers? <laughs> the boots? Oh, y'all gonna laugh at me? I used to wear them in Jackson, Mississippi, and I, the Mountaineers. Over there they look yesterday, like, they look like Tim's. You don't know. Mm-hmm. The Mountaineers is cool. Mm-hmm. They cool. Like, I want to get into the music mm-hmm. a little bit, man. Um, just uh, man. It, it, Mostly he raps with light skinned dudes, NLE Chopper, uh, Twister, that's little so, light skinned so dude. And then, you know, and then, and then what's the other light skinned dude? Montana 300. My, yeah, see, come on, Busy man. Bone. Come on, my nigga, Busy Bone. I, what's up with you, no, man? Bro, I'm trying, Do you like, only rap with the light skinned <laughs> niggas or no, what, bro? Man, it's not even, like, I'm too dark. I can't get on the track. That's crazy. You're not doing Akon. You're not doing none of these dudes, I'm, man. I, I'm finna. Hey, we you better change that, bro. That's, change probably it, bro. Why you, that's probably why you ain't going all the way up because you ain't letting no dark skinned niggas get on the track with you, man. You need to find the blackest nigga you can. Man. My partners, all my nook nook them and pookie them. All right, man. <laughs> hey, nook nook, man. Let's get a hook hook. Let's go, bro. But you see what I, I see? I peeped us in there. Hey, I never, hey, I never, never thought, thought about, about that. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and shout out to my boy Lazy no, Bone. No, I just did it. I just he, did he it. Oh, you got so I got one. Hey, 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 shout out to I just did it. Shout out to Richie Evans, man. Rick Ross, uh, Rick Ross artist Richie Evans. He dark skinned with the beard. He from Compton. Okay, he got okay. One. He okay. Got one. okay. We just, I had him though. I had him. We just did it. We just did it. My first dark skin feature. Hey, y'all ain't man. Y'all are bogus as hell, man. man. Thank you, man. I hey, appreciate y'all it. Bro, you bogus. I told you this interview over here, man. I don't mind every. I even thought about that shit, man. Like real, real talk, man. I'm looking. I'm thinking like, man, light skin, that's light skin, nigga. Okay. I seen it yesterday when I was looking, studying. I was like, this nigga love light skin, nigga. <laughs> oh, no, no. Hey, hey man. Then Terrence Howard, he like, yo, this dude don't play. He's gonna stick it with his people. You yeah. bogus. <laughs> Twister ain't light. Twister light skin. Like, yeah, he light. He's light. He's a light brownish. Yeah, I, that's the. He was borderline of me saying, not saying. No. I got oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Lloyd Talk is a light skin. We got something together. Okay, that's hard. I'm just yeah. saying the obvious one, man. That NLE Chopper one, man. I was so happy when I seen that man because he, he's just a live dude. I love his energy. Ever since he came on the scene, man. I, he is a young dude. He seemed to be like like a person with a good heart. I hadn't got a, got to meet him, yeah. But I just liked his energy ever since he came in the game. Uh, man, NLE Chopper is, is just a gift from God, man. Bro is so intelligent. Really? Yeah, and he got, you know, his his dad is in his life. Mama Chop is his manager. You wow. know what I'm saying? Wow. She's so dope. She's so real. Uh I you know, she just remind me of my mom, you know, how she be or how she be speaking and spitting, you know. And uh it's funny, I heard her say some shit. We were uh on my birthday, we were at Flawless Diamonds. Okay. We, we were doing uh like a, a, a grand opening. And one of the one of the shoes was like forty thousand dollars. You know they got money. You know yeah, they got yeah, big, yeah. big, big money. She's like, she's like, shit. That motherfucker better uh, come with a car and fly me. She was like talking shit. And I was like, man, I knew she was real. I, like, I knew she was street, but she really hold it down, man. And she's a she's a dope woman, man. And uh, you see how she be posting in the league all the time and stuff. And uh, they just good people, man. So man. that whole situation was a blessing for me, man. So. I enjoy, like I said, uh, praying bad. Yeah, let's uh, let's talk about it just a little bit more. Like like, give me. I, I want that. You know, I just the first verse break that down for me, like even why, and and then, you know, auto tune. I hear you. No, I be I, I, I be yeah. listening. Yeah, so yeah. I be listening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know how she is. She be like, nah, I want to hear. I want to hear his voice. Well, I didn't. I didn't use auto tune in the verse. You didn't. No, the it verse sounded. The verse is just my voice. Give me a little bit of that verse. Play it. Yeah. Let me let me pull this up. I got. Yeah, it. I'm pretty sure that's my voice on the on the verse. Yeah, that, you sure they ain't play with it a little no, bit? No, no, bro. That's it's just me. Uh, you know, T. No, the hook. The hook is the hook is the hook. But play the verse. Play. Okay, I'm finna, I'm play, play the verse right no. now. That's the part I heard. So, so wait so a no, minute. So give so, me what does, how does that that hook go? Give me that hook. I've been moving by myself. Okay. All the other shit is bad for my health. Okay. You niggas hate me and you think I can't tell? They be praying bad. They ain't wishing well. Man, so so like like what made what made you go with praying bad? Like like what what, what was how did you come up with the just the name? I know what it mean. You know like yeah. is it something that you just like people was praying on me to that my downfall? But that I too, seen but something different. I experienced a lot of death in my life, right? So like 
I, I lost, man, I lost everybody I love around me. My cousins, well, my brothers, we all grew up in the same house. Most of the time we even lived together or we was always together. My aunties, like, they're like my mama's, like I live with my aunties sometimes, you know. My okay. mom used to live in different states, so. But I, I, I lost them the, the gun violence, right? And I lost them, all of them. Wow. Now I got the names on me and stuff. I'm the same way, though. I get it, man. I get it. So, but what people would do uh-huh. is I get these prayers, send them prayers, praying. The praying hand. And they say, send the prayers if you need anything. Man, I done lost so many. I got tired of that shit, man, because y'all not praying. Y'all just typing some shit and then y'all probably. Y'all not praying. Y'all not praying for me. Y'all praying bad. Man, you know what I'm that's and it. I, so, 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 so then it, it makes sense when you think about it. You know what I'm saying? You just, you just, you just cap it. And you, you, you put on the facade. This is that's why I don't take social media so serious because it's so fake. Wow, this is real. We talking right no, now. No. We exchanging energies right now. We in the same, we in for the sure, same, sure. same bubble. But that's what I start thinking, man. Like about all the times, man. I lost all my people and motherfuckers saying prayers. Man, you're not praying for me. Not praying. You know, you just rank prayers. But you know what praying. I think about with that though because I can um, I remember in the past I used to do that meaning like you know you put praying hands and you have the intentions to pray but then by the time you get to your prayer two three hours later on you forget about that person that you need to pray for that person you start praying for other stuff so like for me personally when I realized that I was doing that I stop like every time I press that praying hand, I'm like, it don't take but a second to say that prayer at that moment at in that moment, time. Man. And that's what I do now. Every single time when I press praying hands, I stop and say that prayer at that moment because I know if I move on, I'm finna forget. Not only yeah. that, you got people putting prayer hands on there that's ops. They secretly yeah, don't want true. you to win. So they, 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 so they, so they, they praying on your demise. They're praying, they're praying on your demise, man. They're not really, you know, they're not really for you. For the for the progression of your life or mm-hmm. uh, the encouragement of uplifting your your energy, or your entity, whatever you're trying to do, you know that that pray that's that's all smoke and mirrors. It's smoke and mirrors. You know they want to they want to know the program. They want to know the game plan, so they can try to figure out a way to make you travel and get fouled out. How was it like working with NLE Chopper in the studio? I didn't even work with him. Y'all, know he we, sent it. Y'all yeah, sent it. Y'all you know, niggas different now. But you but you know what's so crazy is he did it so quick, and then he called me like, you know, let's shoot the video. I'm gonna you know come to Chicago. I was like, what? So he so said, I'm coming. So I had to have the video, I had to have everything set up. The and treatments like, and everything had to be I, right. I mean, I got that ready in two hours, man. Mm. Wow. Yeah, I was ready. You man, know, that's and, heavy. Yeah, I'm, I'm a hustler, man. I'm gonna make it happen, man. I'm get a blessing to be, do a song with somebody of his caliber. Some some people would never in their life ever, ever even get to meet him or see him. You know, for me to even be on a song with him in a video, man, I'm, I'm over blessed. So he called you and said, hey, I'm, I'm on coming. my way. I'm coming to Chicago. I'm Shattown. on my way. He was in Chicago. He was on his way. To, he's flying to Chicago to get some jewelry. Wow, that's Cause hard, man. Because me and him got the same jewelry. Same jeweler. And his, the jewelry, uh, my shout homie out, Nick. Shout out Nick. Yeah, Nick, flawless diamonds. Yeah. Make a real one. He the one to set, he the one to set it up. Wow! Because we did a charity event together. And see, this is the thing about giving back. See, I do a lot of giving back. So I was at an event and I had to turn out my empire post. You know, they auction off just you know for free. I ain't trying to pull up. Yeah. Just talk to the people, take mm-hmm. pictures. And uh, he was there too. And then we ended up like vibing. We went out to eat afterwards and, and talk. We exchanged numbers. Then he did a video uh, for a stop the violence video right down the spot for us, just to talk. Yeah. You know, to the uh, people, and then I started sending them shoes. I had a shoe store at the time. Yeah, I was like, "Man, you like these kids, bro?" He's like, "Yeah, send them." I sent them to him, gang. You know, he like, "Thanks, gang." I see him rocking them and stuff. I sent them a couple no- more pairs of shoes, and then all of a sudden, he's like, "Hey, man, we we should do a song." So I was sending them songs. He's like, marking fire emojis on some of my songs. He's like, "Man, you cold?" He, he like my flow. I got a different yeah. sound. So then, um, he, he I sent them praying bad. He had it done like that, and I and that my first verse was an auto tune. And I, but when I heard his verse, I took the auto tune off and just went with my voice. Mm. But it sounds good. Yeah, man. thank you. Thank Both you. of y'all verse sound hard. I listened to it yesterday. I always I go research, but I, like I said, I already, I already was checking for his music. I'm not gonna lie, already because he's got such a big brand. He already big. I had not heard of your music like until till after when Cloud. when I got the call. I was like, man, oh okay, yeah, let's get it. And I was in Atlanta when he called me, and yeah. I was like, man, well, I'm gonna come back early so I can get him in there. You know what I'm saying? Before yeah. you go back, and it was like, man, we came on back, and it was love. Love, man so thank you for you know coming on here and we definitely made sure we got back here to show you some love man you know what i'm saying man boss talk man you know it's been number love in dallas and man i'm just blessed to be sitting in this seat man because uh, like i said man i wanted to quit two weeks ago man i'm glad man. you didn't and i was like man you know i got like 
six hundred songs plus recorded. Wow. So I record so much. I would I would record so much. My cars is getting repoed at my shows. I was I was rapping real. I rap real lyrics. Yeah, about what's going on in your life. I was like I was really shooting videos, looking fly, but I didn't have no furniture or nothing. I had like two pairs of kicks that was super clean, and I had a CD burner. Wow. Another thing I want to ask you about it: <clears throat> you don't curse in your lyrics. I really, I usually don't. Really, not my, my, I, like I don't hear much of. Yeah, it. yeah. I don't like it, to promote like I don't like to downgrade our women. You know, I think we got enough, enough, enough of that going on. Yeah. And I don't like to like promote like me uh, violence towards our uh, people. I talk. I tell the story. I tell you about situations I've been in, or uh, you know. But yeah, I'm you not, can tell it without cursing or yeah, doing any of that stuff. But I, I don't got to. I ain't got to tell you. I, I pull up on you, put you with this. I ain't finna do. I ain't finna pull up on you. I'm nah. I ain't trying to. Do, I want to see you live, bro. I don't care. You can say whatever you want about me. Say you Say the worst stuff, man. You know I don't know what you're going through. I wow. still. I still love you, man. You know? I went through a. Uh, I had a test in in Atlanta like yesterday, yes, and it's man. like. You know, sometimes you get these tests, so I don't even want to bring it up because it ain't nothing. But people that do certain things to irritate you, and you have good thing I got a good wife because it was like, man, could have went a whole different way if I was really in that egotistic way I always am. Drop the ego, it's like, baby. man. Let me go on and you know. But at the end of the day, you don't know what people are going through. As my wife explained that yesterday, you don't know what this person might have had to deal with, face. And then look at me, I'm blessed. So why would I even put myself in that situation, man? Let's keep it moving, man. God bless him. Let's bless other people in here so we can get out of here and get back and meet you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm like, no, man. That's and that's that's where we at, man. Just people. People they, they 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 project, man. They project their insecurities on themselves. You know, they got so many things they wanted to do and they didn't do it. And they got to see you. That's it. it. And they, they 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 throwing it at you. But it's really them throwing it at themselves. And so I had to learn that, man. And and, and like even as I be, continue to grow, I didn't got diss songs. I didn't got a whole bunch of oh, stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah, people it's coming going, with it. People going crazy over the internet. He ain't the best. And if somebody might post I'm the best, and I might have an article put up. You know, people just giving me my flowers. I ain't, I don't know these people. They just showing me real love. Yeah. But you got people going to come. But guess what? I'm gonna still show love. I that stuff don't bother me. Let man. me pull you back into the music, man. So from uh, praying bad to play to win. Whew. Like from 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 play to win all the way to praying bad. What was the biggest thing that changed in who you are as a as an artist? From 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 play to win all the way to praying bad. What changed? Uh, you know, praying bad. I started getting. I started getting a little bit more. Uh, I had so much experience on praying bad. You can tell that I had been seasoned for being on tour with Twister. Yeah. So Twister had took me on tour. Yeah, so, I seen I seen some of that. So 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 in that time, not only am I, am I learning new delivery methods, and I'm learning how to carry myself as an artist and a man. Like Twister taught me how to be more, a little more aggressive. Don't be so passive. He said, "Man, pop your shit, man." He said, and he said, "Hey, <laughs> he did say this to me too, man. Shout out to me, bro." He said, "Man, don't nobody want to hear you rap, nigga. Take your shirt off. Look at your eyes, <laughs> nigga. <laughs> That's yeah, real." Yeah, he's like, "Man, you can rap all day. That's cool." And you just need hits, nigga. <laughs> yeah. And he, and, he, and he, you know, Twister taught me so much. So you could see the transition from play to win to praying back. Even how my, my video etiquette, you could look at my eyes and see I'm more determined. Yeah. Uh, you could see that I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Excuse my friend. You was more respectful in, 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 in uh, play, play to win. win. Praying back, I don't gloves off, baby. <laughs> y'all didn't, y'all didn't built me. Y'all didn't made me what y'all didn't want to make me. Y'all kept messing with me. Now you done built me up. Let me let me let me play the play. You probably don't remember the song, but I'm gonna play it anyway. Uh, play the win. I'm gonna play. <laughs> you know what you I told remember you? Probably don't remember. All songs. You probably don't remember the song, but Sometimes. I want I want to get that verse. I just always get a verse out of. You. On my bond. That's when I knew you was a real one. Don't know other woman out here got your mind on you. Yeah, man, I gotta take that off, man. That's hard, man. man. You, gonna, you gotta rock with that one. <laughs> you gotta rock with that one, man. For man, real. I love it, man. I ain't gonna lie to you. It's good music, man. It's, so it make you feel good, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. The, hey, Twister said that's his favorite song. He, he said he played it every day. But it's real though. What he's saying, man. Like it's, I'm, I'm gonna always jam that out, man. Because everybody should be playing to win. You know what I'm saying? Man, he played that. He said he played that song every day. How did you end up like? Uh, how did you come up with that title? Like, and and, and the you, beat the beat was called "Play to Win" when I bought it. Oh, okay, so and, it was already written. Like the beat, was it was called, already set up. Like when I seen the beat, I think the beat was called "Play to Win," and I was like, "I'll play to win, man." Remember sleeping on the floor? Da, 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 da. So I'll be, I'll like humble, uh, hum some some shit, you know. When I hear beat, I was like, "Yeah, I made the song." I was like, "Twister got to be on this song." That's big. I said, "I got to get Twister on this one." 
Wow. And then, then after that, man, bro just end up taking me with him. I start popping up at shows and festivals, 10, 20,000 plus. He bring me on stage to perform a song with me. What was, the, what was the biggest thing that you seen to us to do that he didn't say nothing, but you watched him do it and you was like, man, definitely gonna bite that, definitely gonna bring that into what I do. Man, Twist is so cold. So the biggest thing I seen him do is when somebody's getting ready to freak out when they see him, instead of just like get moving away from him or not like, you know, hurt, having the security, I mean, he'd go up to him and ask him to just take a picture. He'd take the tension off. Well, I'm going to tell you something that didn't happen with my wife. I'm glad you said that. That's big. I'm glad you said that. We was in Vegas. We was at the Palms Hotel. I was not caring about Twister like that because we dealing with, you know, she, she like Twister. I want to get a picture with him. This nigga had some huge niggas with him. Oh, yeah, like, new niggas. Oh, these niggas were big. In Vegas? And, and yeah, yeah, at the what? casino. Well, we was at the Palms. No, no, this was a while back. This was years ago. Oh, okay. It probably was something going on at the time. I think this was when Rick Ross had, had said a few things about different things and it was just a, I don't know what temperature he was on, but at any rate, my wife wanted to take a picture with this dude, man. He wouldn't do it. It wasn't him. I don't know if he even seen her. His bodyguards was I'm very, I'm very polite, right? They don't play. I don't, they were tripping. They don't play. I'm, I'm very polite. I'm not just going to run up to him seeing that there's bodyguards and whatever. Yeah. I'm going to ask the bodyguards, hey, can I go take a picture with him? That's respectful. And they were like, they were like, no, whatever. And I'm like, okay, fine, cool, whatever. And I just She was left. pissed, though. Yeah, I had should, to hear about nah, that. If, if Twister would have seen you coming up, Twister cool, like he would have. He, he wouldn't have let that he happen. Let that, he wouldn't. But his, but his but security, you know, you think of Chicago, you know, his security, they be on it, bro. Like, they don't play. Like, I've seen. But I was by myself, not like I had a whole gang of people with me. I was the only one walked up to them nah. and be like, hey. Yeah, because we was at the casino. They, he, we was really around some slot machines, wasn't no, we? No, no, no. He was checking in. He was checking in. He was checking in, and they were right there. They were right him. there. Two big dudes. Yeah. But I was laughing because I really don't care. Like, like, far as I'm like, okay, the nigga gonna need to see me. He did yeah, a good yeah. thing for that nigga to meet me because I'm one of them guys. Yeah, you know? you one of them guys. But her, she, <laughs> man, she like, I wanna take a picture with Twister. You know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, yeah, not for but, you. But it, it's been a few times, man, like back back in the day that people, you know, things happen that we was, you know, but God has a way of opening your eyes and saying, you know what, man, I'm gonna show you this, how it really go down. Like, you gotta yeah. understand, when God do something for you, you know it's for you. You ain't got to worry about none of this other stuff. He move everything out the way and say, look at this right here. This was you know happening for me, man. I swear, <laughs> man. Like, that's why I'm here. Man, thank you for this coming is, This again. is why I'm here, bro. I'm telling you, man. I didn't. You didn't even know you was coming on Boss Talk? Man, I didn't know. Not, not the Boss Talk right now, man. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? That's I'm over hard, here, man. I'm over here living. Oh man, we get, and it's going down too. Yeah. It's gonna be a dope show. I always get out. I told you that, man. Yeah, for like, sure. So let's get into uh, busy. Why? Why not lazy? Lazy, follow me on Instagram. Two shots to Lazy Bone, the hardest nigga out the whole group. All only because I'm connected and well respected with you, bro. You forever boss talk one on one certified. You my guy, man. Shout out to be legit. It's certain one money B niggas that just step up and rock with E like that. But what? Up with busy because he was lighter than the rest of them. You decided to rock yeah. out with him, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> but I he was like the wildest one. You so, I, me? so I had to, so I was looking at the light skin card index. And I was like, okay, he met the requirements. I was like, perfect. So, now, now to check his temperature, I was like, is, is he gonna do some light skin activity? Okay, yeah, he's very okay, cool, it's perfect. You know, well, he threw the mic over yeah. there, man. RIP to a gangster boo. He probably hate that happen now, but he threw the mic when they were having the verses. So I remember that he's yeah. the one, yeah, he's so, the one. No, you know what? He was my favorite one in the group as a kid. He could, he was really like the one that stuck out because he, he was the youngest. He was the youngest, yeah. So I like, I just liked his cadence and voice, and he was always my favorite one. So, and he rocked with the south too. Busy, uh, man, listen, man, this dude, I always rock with the South. I like that about him for sure. So, so yeah. So that's why I poke, pick Busy. He was my favorite one. I think all yeah. of them dope though. No, all they all them cold. Boys, like, them boy legendary you know, man. You know who? You know who was, I think was my underdog of the group. Who I really loved was was uh, Flesh and Bone. Flesh and Bone. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I Flesh agree and with Bone. That. You know he went platinum by himself. By himself. Wow. That album he dropped. Uh, Humble United Gathering Souls because I, I still like go to that and use some of that stuff for new stuff for today. I like to get ideas from. Yeah, I'm, and I'm probably gonna end up doing something with him because I just love. Who was it. the one right? Because who would you argue that might have been the hottest? Like you liked uh, Busy, but the other one was uh, Crazy. What? Crazy. Crazy was. Crazy. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, had yeah, it yeah. going. They loved yeah, it. Crazy. He had a lot of momentum with what he was doing. 
Lazy, lazy, just kind of rolled with the wave and just chill. Yeah, lazy. He never had no issues with nothing that was going on. Lazy, a player, man. He was cool. <laughs> I, I feel like you know, I, I opened for them with Twister in, in, in Arizona and Tempe, and uh, man, it was the coolest dudes in the yeah. world, bro. Like, yeah. like lazy, crazy. Wish was there, yeah. man. Man, bro, we was kicking it, bro. But how did y'all do the song though? You ain't telling me how the song. How did y'all even link it up to do it? Man, look, I got a hold of uh, B- Busy. You know, on Instagram, you know what I'm saying? I got a hold of his management. He said, he said, yeah. And so his manager sounds like Busy Bone. <laughs> they sound the same. <laughs> hey, shout out to August, man. He cool. He, like, he said, Busy wants to do this song, man. He really likes it. He light skin too. <laughs> so it was a whole light skin conversation <laughs> to connect this light skin song That's together. Hard. And then I end up putting another light skin nigga on the song, Montana 300. So, we, uh, <laughs> So this is a whole light skin song, bro. So now you got me. <laughs> hey man, I ain't doing no more features with light skin niggas, man. It's it's done, man. But, man, it's hard though. But y'all y'all came up on that one though. I ain't gonna lie to you. Y'all wanna listen to a little bit of it, man. Let me see. Get out. Yeah. It was, it, it, I just I just re-released it. You did? Yeah, I had re re-released it. Got so many demons while I was in prison, just looking at women just living. First fucking brutality. By the time I That's finish you. this verse, it'd be so many fucking curses. <laughs> I wasn't doing the show with him now versus uh, back then. How, like two years ago, y'all did the song, right? Yeah. And how was it? How how's he changed? He still the same OG? Like like genuine say he the same OG? Yeah, you man. know, busy. B- I didn't really get the vibe with him. You like didn't get that. the vibe with him. Nah, Damn. man. He was, you know, it was. They always say don't meet your idols. <laughs> Bro, he was on one. He was, well, it he, happens. Yeah, he was different. I think that and that happens a lot. Like I've I've seen people that me and them them rocked out, and then I get back to them, and it be they. It's cause people go through, man. People don't know what you look the same, but you've been through hell and high that, water. That's why bro. I don't even hold like like even the situation with him, bro. I, he's still one of my favorite rappers. Something could be going on with the kids. Something yeah, could be going on so with I his never, personal life. Yeah, I, Anything could be going on. I kill these niggas a pass, he's still, bro. He's still my idol. Like he, yeah, like, I'm not going to judge him off that one. Like what, what, was I salty when I, I was like, man, what's up, you know? But his manager told me that man, he he really wants to do uh, the video. He wants to do this and that. He was telling me, and he's like, man, he just tired. He's going through a lot. I was like, bro, it's all good, man. It's all love, bro. It's still love, bro. It's we gonna love. we gonna figure it out. And that's the way it's supposed to be, we man. That's what men do. We we, we figure we it gonna out. We gonna figure this shit out. And that's hard. But but because bro got bro is a legend, man. That, I don't man, know what that nigga up, got going on. What he going through? He. I'm thinking I'm going through some shit. I can imagine all the people be hitting him up and all the Boy, stuff he goes You don't through. even want to hear uh, his you know story. No, nah, you don't want to hear his story, bro. You know, that's so, that's the whole game. So you know it is what it is, man. man. So like like top three artists of all time, dead or alive. You know, number one, Tupac. All eyes on me, living no, life no, is no a thug, nigga, until the day I die. Then my life is a boss player. All eyes on me. You know why he's number one? But he might know he my number two. But why is he your number one? Because because he raps with passion and pers- uh, and purpose, his his words, you know, he was so good at articulating when he was just delivering his message, man. His message meant something. It, it moved you. It wasn't just. I don't care about him not being the coldest lyricist or having the most wittiest rhyme patterns. The nigga really had a purpose and a, and a movement. He really stood for something. He really believed in what he was saying. He made you believe in it. He gave you hope and purpose. When his song came on, when Pac died, I. Pac was my dad when I was a kid. So, that's he, real. so when he died, I had beef with Biggie. No, no, that's as real. As a kid, and that, that, that's how strong his influence was. I used to write his name on my window when it was like Tupac forever. I go to school, I'm ready. I was a kid, man. That influence. I was a little kid, but 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 he was revolutionary, bro. He was a Black Panther. He he was brought up different. Look at him at 25 versus a rapper now at 25. Man, he was the maturity like, level is crazy. And, and you got to think about it though, like that, like he was hard, bro. Like people don't realize me against the world, man. That was before <sighs> Death Row, like. Uh, this nigga here was Rob, Dear Mama The hardest song You ever want to see For a mother That was done And it could never I don't think nobody will ever top it bro Never man I don't for think real. nobody Ever top it Now when I say he My number two Is because My number one Which is Pimp C Would more than likely Make him his number one Yeah So you see what I'm saying That's But I'm in the saying. south but in the And he's younger than me too But uh, uh, me, and, me and Pac The same age Pac one month Older than me but PMC younger than me, but I still like because of the way he, you know, I don't know if you understand what, like things be prophetic. Like when a person die, 
they they pretty much you know their legacy it pretty much amplifies yeah and what you were saying is something that permeates the waves of life you understand what i'm saying so i think this guy man like i said both of them two of our fallen soldiers man um man you know just hard man who's your number two lil wayne rock with lil wayne well you know if we want to go well, the reason why I would say Lil Wayne, Lil Wayne was one of the most influential artists of all time as well, and um, it's lyrically and his his body of work is just is, is unmatched to me, man. Like far as all the work he's put in, I never give him the credit that I need to give him because I'm so Lil Wayne, right? Yeah. And Lil Wayne is is it, you know? Lil That's Wayne, big, Lil man. Wayne is incredible. He carried a whole label. Lil Wayne survived the Hot Boys, Cash Money. He brought him back, you know. You know, so Lil Wayne influenced. He's, he's probably one of the coldest niggas when it comes down to labels and hanging in there and being loyal. He's a loyal dude. And he, he influenced all a lot of the newer generation now, you know, the young thugs and stuff. Lil Wayne influenced all these people, man. Number three. Uh, number three. So it's going to be a tough one. Uh, I'm going to say number three is going to have to be, man, between. Eminem. Okay. Because, I, I, listen, man. Eminem can rap. Eminem lyrically is diabolical. Like, this dude is crazy with the flow. The punchlines of wordplay. Um, I'm not saying I don't get in the car and be like, man, I'm going to throw an Eminem right oh, now. I knew you ain't even going to listen to him like that. Well, I'm talking about but this. Just, you, you're talking a, about his rap style. As an MC... Incredible storytelling, got it. Punchlines, got it. Uh, showing range and emotion, and connecting the whole album, got it. His whole album was flowed through. Now you get an album, you got. To, make sure you got the chick song for the chicks. Make sure you, you know. But he he made he had like movies. His albums are like films to me. You know what I'm saying? So Eminem's got to be number three. Yeah, I would probably. I ain't gonna lie, I put Fifty Cent before Eminem. 50 Cent got that real grit, that real street. I just street. like 50. I'm a 50 fan. I'm a 50 but, fan but too. But at the end of the day, I know what you're saying with the uh, with with Eminem. I'm not a I'm not an Eminem fan like that. But I'm a 50 Cent fan. I'm a 50 Cent fan over Eminem all day. Really? Yeah, but rap technical. You said technical. You saying the technical rap style? Technic, the, technical. The lyrical rap, lyricism. Ly the lyricism and his ability to put together. Um, in an artistic fashion, see, Fifty Cent's better at packaging to me and marketing and 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 and, and, and being Fifty Cent. It's the pain for yeah. me. It's the pain when you've been through something. I, it's hard to get around Fifty and Tupac, and th it's the pain. It's that pain that these niggas done faced and been through. Even Pimp C, even Pac. It's the pain, it's bro. The pain. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's the damn pain. I, and I get the most. You know, I get the right. most views of my songs, and you know, when I talk, when like. My song, Rich in Pain, you know, yeah. you know, people love me hit to telling that damn stories, man, you know. I was like, man, I'm going to tell this shit, man, whatever, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you have it, you know. Y'all can judge me. Cause I used to be afraid, I used to be afraid of putting too much out because I didn't want to, you know, get judged so much because, you know, I, I'm not, wasn't the best person all the time. Yeah. And, um, but I just realized, man, everybody fuck up and everybody's done a bunch of bad shit. Everybody. So Ain't nobody, what? no big out of you. People, if, 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 if they got a problem with the, the shit I did and the wrong I've done in my life and I atone for it, then I don't give it. Don't don't listen to me. They got different stuff Move going around. on themselves. But <laughs> when you think about you, what about Chicago, man? Like, is it getting any better, man? I know Lil Durk, man. He's one of the pioneers up there. Yeah. Um, like you, I mean, uh, Twister's up there. Common. I hadn't heard of uh, uh, what's that boy named Chance the Rap? I hadn't heard nothing from him. You wearing the Leo shirt? What does that mean to you? What are you doing with that? Man, I love the Leo, man. Yeah, Leo's dope. Yeah, like yeah, I was a DMX fan, so. If you're going to say top five, definitely DMX. I ain't saying top five, but I get, I get it. But was when you think about Chicago, is it is it something like, do you think it's getting better? No. No better? I feel like, um, I mean, I, I'll say it's getting better in the sense that we are acknowledging that we have an issue that we need to address. Now it's time to us to go, get put, put into work. And I think it's up to each individual. And uh, we, we each got a, we got a part. Especially entertainers, I feel like me as an entertainer, I, I have a huge responsibility on influencing children. Whether I want to say it's just music, you know, I'm just doing my thing. I still know that I was one of those kids that literally took everything that Tupac said to heart. 
so much that I hated a man I never met and even know anything about. And I was a shorty. I'm beefing with Biggie Smalls and Puff Daddy, you know, and, and no disrespect to Diddy nobody. But when I was a kid, man, I had beef with you because I loved Tupac that much. That's real. When you think about uh, Kanye, you can't say Chicago and Illinois and all that without saying Kanye West, bro. Incredible artist, man. You get you got Kanye uh, influenced me Malik a lot. Malik yourself, my boy. He I me mean, he's been on the show. Like it's a lot of them up there, real ones that I man, deal with from man, Chicago. Man, crucial conflict, and, bro. And just Illinois all together. Yeah, do or uh, die. Man, don't forget about what's the name, uh, Chief Keith. Man, you, you Chief you know, Keith started the whole people, drill That's what I'm saying. And people don't realize. And I know if you sit and talk to him today. He's an older guy now. Yeah. He's not where he was then. People don't realize that people evolve either. Yeah. Like you got to let people evolve. Like a lot of times people be putting people in a box like they don't want them to come out, but yeah. people evolve. You're not, the, why do you think I asked you the question about the, from one one speck in your life to the next? To like, the next song, Because yeah. at the end of the day, you change. I change. People yeah. change, man. And that's the that's an, another issue. I see that all the time. People people think they know you. I went to school with Hane on shit. <laughs> You went to school. When was that? You don't know me. <laughs> That's what I'm telling you. I'm not you. even the same person I was last year. That's right. Like if you ain't bringing a new year with me, you don't know me. And that's the way it be, man. You feel me? No, that's true. So how can people get a hold of you, man, if they're trying to link up with you? Uh, you can hit me on Instagram at uh, this is Cannon. So T H I S I S C you know, N um, or everywhere MarioCannon.com. Um, you can just go right there, click my email, bookingmariocannon at gmail.com. I do respond on Instagram. I be trying to get back to everybody because I'm one of them dudes that try to show people love. I might like your story randomly just because, give you some encouragement. That's just who I am. I like to see people win. I like to push people like, man, Mario Cannon, you know, people screenshot all the time when I heart their story. Like, Mario Cannon just hearted my story. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because I'm just, I'm trying to show them love. Like, they might be having a bad day. I don't know if a, a nigga with half a million followers and a song in Italy chop would like they story and like, they gonna feel good. And it's happened to me every day. Bro. Every day I make sure I like somebody's story randomly and they get happy every Bro, time. I'm telling you right now, I, I, even, I ain't gonna lie, I ain't no fan or nothing. Fan, I don't fan out on di different things, but Rick Ross, he liked some of my stuff. I was like, look, this Rick Ross like my stuff. You know, like, yeah. it's stuff like that that make you feel like, man, you know, you're doing something, but then what trip you out is some of the dudes you really know that don't like your stuff. And it's like, you, and then you be seeing them though, and y'all know each other, and y'all cool with each other, and they be on, on a level, but they don't never rock hey, boss with talk, you. I ask you so question, I just though. pull up. Let me ask I you a question. What's that? Why Rick Ross? Because he dark skinned? That's my boy. That's yeah, that, I feel like you ain't. No, nah, Birdman, really Rick no Ross, skin. all the niggas. Uh, yeah, you I ride with them. What's up? <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Yo, Rick nah. Ross. You came at me, so I'm coming at you. No, nah, Rick Ross is just a dope dude, man. And then the boss thing, you know what I'm yeah. saying? The boss thing, uh, Slim Thug, the boss thing, man. Okay, like I'll let this like boss let's talk. Ball, they, 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 these guys love boss stuff, so hey, I, love I rock Slim with them. Slim Thug, hard. Boss. Boss. <laughs> so it's slim that, thug that stuff thugger. connect us. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Him, man. I love these guys because they connected through Boss Talk uh, 101, you know, as far as the boss word, you know. For and sure. it, ain't nothing wrong with being a boss, right, babe? Yeah, no, man, no. check it, man. Say so. Man, hey, man, we love you, bro. I'm so glad I got to meet you. I know we're going to see each other again. We coming to Chicago again. Uh, shout out to all the people in Chicago that I interviewed. I come up. I pull up. Okay. I, I'm going to pull up. When I get back in the country, I'm going out the country. I need to get I'm some, when some I come, interviews, you got to rock out with me like, E, I got you this one. You got to come sit in with them with me. We're going to rock out, that. man. I do all that, that bro. That's what this about. Our culture, we got to come together. We got to come together. City to city. Come to come state together. State to state. We got to lock in with each other. Show people that we can unify so we can help everybody grow, man. Yeah, Forget man. about who ain't coming with us. Just look at who with us, though. You know what I'm saying? Because they coming later on. They coming later on. Real <laughs> Thank talk. you, man. Real talk, man. That was, hey, that was hard. I like that. <laughs> say, man, I ain't going to say nothing negative about them because we're going to love them till they get to, to where they need to be. Till they get to where they need to be, man. man Real talk. Thank you so much for coming on the show, man. We love you, bro. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. And we have.